This is Performers Wanted. Welcome to the show, y'all. Today we're going to be talking to Johnny Cassidy, the creator of Authenticity the Musical, and most recently, Heartbreak Hospital. Let's pop in and see how he's doing. Johnny, hi. How are you doing? I am good. How are you doing? I am doing good. Thank you for coming in. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, morning. Tell us a little bit about you specifically. What is in? What is it that you do? Yeah, um, my name is Johnny Cassidy, and I make uh, musicals that kind of. I make musicals that are about like mental health related topics and with modern themes, kind of like what's going on like today, today in society. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of a it's it's an, a nonprofit organization trying to get these shows to schools for them to be able to perform rather than like go on Broadway or anything. Right. Right. OK. Um, so brought you in because for a while now, um, a pretty long while I had been hearing whispers and seeing on social media and, you know, interacting with, uh, performers who have been involved with a show you were putting together called mm -hmm. Authenticity, the musical. Mm -hmm. Um, how long have you been working on that? Authenticity. Um, I started in... 2019 and i would say like i finished in 2022 i was working on it for a bit and we made a feature film a cast album and uh and like a you know like a package stage production okay nice nice um i uh i was working um closely with a performer in erica uh, cruz oh uh, was involved and we kind of overlapped that way mm -hmm. um, but uh yeah i found it i saw that you were doing um different mediums for mm -hmm. this particular production um and um i'm I guess now I'm, I'm wondering what idea came first did you think about having a movie first we had put it on stage first or uh what was your idea with that yeah so it started out as a um it started out as like a senior thesis for school right. and and it was like oh it was going to be like a short film but then i wanted to write all the songs for it so then i was like okay i kind of want it to be a feature film then we made it a feature film instead mm -hmm. um and then and then i was kind of like uh i want to I want to, I, I mean, it was always like kind of an idea that like I wanted to put up a stage show anyway, but it was like COVID, so it wasn't really realistic. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, let me just make a musical on film. And then, yeah, so it started out as film. And then we kind of moved to the cast album as that was going. Cause we were like, okay, we want like a tangible way we could hear these songs that aren't like, mm -hmm. you know, pre recorded live stuff. And so we did the cast album and then, alongside the cast album we like started we did like a little test like we did the first act at like the hollywood fringe festival and that's also where like i met erica like we casted um like new people as the parts and kind of tried to see how it would work um being with more than you know the original actors and if it could be adaptable to those things right right okay yeah cool. um so anyone who may not know um because we're gonna we're gonna talk a decent amount about authenticity but um, mm -hmm. anyone who may not know um what is authenticity about what is what is this show about what's this movie about um without giving anything away because i want people to go and actually watch it but like what is it about um generally what's the synopsis yeah it's 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 about it's like that classic story of like there's like a bully that falls in love with the guy well, it's, it's, it's like a, there's like this, this popular girl at school that uh, kind of wants to have like a deeper connection to people in general. Mm -hmm. And she realizes the only way to do that is social media. So she ends up catfishing one of the kids that, um, you know, she kind of picks on and bullies and then they kind of form a relationship and, I would, I mean, I would say fall in love, but it's more so like they, they kind of like really share like a deep connection 
that you wouldn't normally get outside of social media and mm -hmm. it starts to bleed into uh, real life and starts to show consequences the more deep she gets into the relationship while also you know the the consequences of um keeping somebody at arm's length but also trying to get closer to them right okay that's really cool that's Thanks. really cool and the idea mm -hmm. um you said initially it was for a senior thesis um mm -hmm. and you know if you know if anyone is like in film school or anything like that you know you'll have to do a senior thesis near the end mm -hmm. um and sometimes people are thinking of their thesis the entire last year sometimes it pops in their head when they get in um when did you come up with this specific idea like when was that inception um it actually well i i had this idea like a little bit past like high school where I was, where it wasn't really like super developed i mean I, before i start sitting down and actually writing something i usually dwell on it for like years before you know and until i could see a beginning middle and end in my head and i'm like oh, okay this is something worth writing down but, like i kind of teetered on it since like high school like a like at least four or five years where it was like at one point it was like oh it would just be cool to make a show that had like a completely split stage of like somebody's entire life on this side of the coast and then that side of the coast and are connected by social media and then it started to develop into like oh like how would that story exist and then it started getting, um, you know, like the more I went throughout college, it was kind of like a very passive idea. Like I'm a film major, so I spent a lot of time focusing on like TV and like uh, mm -hmm. more like short form series content. So I, I that was kind of at my forefront. But then as like more elements came together, it started to be like the right time to do it, I guess. And then COVID kind of made me want to do it more. And um, I, yeah, and then, then so that's kind of the, the idea has been like at least teetering around for like four or five years. Right. Yeah. So you like, I'm not going to say sit. I was almost like I was sat in this idea, but it was kind of like you were, you had the idea and almost like kind of mm -hmm. bit by bit, like conceptualizing it every so often, like in your head until it was time to actually put it on paper. Mm -hmm. um, and this is something that, I mean, it's very common um, in entertainment, especially like with putting up content. A lot of things have to go right for a movie to be made. A mm -hmm. lot more things have to go right for a musical to be put on stage. Mm -hmm. um, like a lot. So like, yeah, it being as long a process and still being with it is completely normal, completely common because, you know, like a lot of people will probably think like, oh, come up with the idea, give it to someone, they make it, then next thing you know, like it's it's out in a mm -hmm. few months or out in a year. Uh, so yeah. you've probably been sitting on it for a very, very long time, conceptualizing and making it better, making it better. Um, and you, I mean, you, it's finally in fruition in a few different mediums. Mm -hmm. um, are you, you're, are you still with this musical? Are you still conceptualizing, trying to make it better um, to this mm -hmm. day, even though you've put things out? Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the best part about theater is like it kind of is able to regrow after it's been done. Like the movie itself is like I would consider like that's like that's like the that's kind of like the original vision and like it exists in that form, but now that it's a stage show it's able to evolve a little bit. Like we added a couple songs to the show as we like went through each process, but I still feel like like we could we could still add and take away stuff but the idea is like um it's it's kind of it's kind of it's a little set um i don't really work on it anymore i don't really want to like mess with you know like mm -hmm. part of the creativity is the time it was invented in i don't right. want to like recorrect anything that was like mm -hmm. from that time so like i'm more so like it kind of lives and breathes through my other musicals like as i've been um kind of you know, like I took that structure of like how that worked well and I like started making other musicals and they're still kind of like the right. things I would say that exist in that are like its core identity, which is like, oh, something about connection, something about people being connected by like their mentality and their, um, you know, in this world of like technology, I would say like that authenticity kind of lives in, uh, you know, like the themes, they live on in other things. 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So your your yeah, I mean your legacy of art. Yeah, pretty much. You know, it begins with authenticity, but then mm -hmm. like you are writing other things, and it'll be like, okay, yeah, no, that's that's definitely a, a Johnny Cassidy production. That's that's what he does. Like, oh, and then you may make something that's like does great and is amazing, but then someone will be like, oh, but do you remember authenticity? Mm -hmm. you know? That's kind of mm -hmm. where it started. Um, and there's a lot of um, artists with that where it's just like, oh, Lynn manuel has Hamilton, but did you see, like, 21 Chubb Street? Like, you know, like, mm -hmm. starting that, you know, mm -hmm. as far back as there. You said something interesting earlier, which um, I really dig, and that has something to do with trying to get these productions, the productions that you have in schools to be mm -hmm. able to perform those. Um, what is that process like and how did you come up with that idea to kind of have those be um, uh, shows that schools do because I I know mm -hmm. that to be a thing where it's just like okay this is a show that maybe hasn't like touched a high medium stage but mm -hmm. you see them in schools a, you know a lot um and I was always wondering, like, where they kind of came from. So, mm. what's what is that process like doing something like that, like actually getting your uh, your shows in schools? Because in all actuality, more people may be familiar with your shows by doing it that way than mm -hmm. even trying to get it like off Broadway or Broadway or West End or anything like that. So, what's that process like? Yeah, I mean, it's still it's an ongoing process because it's not really a concept people understand yet. You usually take a Disney show or like a show that's like licensed and you're like, oh, we're going to rent this for $5,000, whatever. Right. And it kind of came through the concept of like, oh, shoot, like I really want people to see this show and I want people to be able to kind of like, like, like the more I looked into um, how other shows worked, like you can't change script, you can't change a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and the budget is so expensive and most like I grew up in theater. I know like people around me like struggle with theatrical budgets because it's like you sometimes schools can only afford five, ten thousand right. dollars. And that's like all that's like five ten thousand dollars could sometimes be as much as like they charge for um doing just borrowing the show, not including sets or like everything you need to make a show work. Right. So um I mean I kind of like thought that would be an avenue. Cause I never really wanted to go to Broadway with it, but like, I did want to like make people laugh with it. And I'm like, I would, it would be so much quicker to get this in front of people, you know, like technology, social media. Like I want to talk about that stuff. Um, and I'm like, if I do that and I could package it myself, I don't have to charge $5,000. I could charge like $500. And then suddenly a school can work on like, you know, like they could, they'll have so much more money available to them. They get like the resources, maybe they could change something in my script, you know, or like move stuff around to kind of fit their, their school, you know, like, mm -hmm. like instead of taking these shows that exist that weren't really made for educational purposes, right? Um, you know, like you could take my script and kind of format, like make it fit to the educational needs of that particular place. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and I mean, it's hard. It's like, people don't, it's harder than getting into the entertainment industry. I'm like trying to talk to administrators and get into board meetings just to tell people about this idea. But like, I think I've been like success, not successfully, actually. I've been like for the past, like since Authenticity's inception, at least the past three years, I've been like sending the movie, the cast album, everything to any school I know. There was one point where I was even like, I will pay people to put this up at their school. But it's it's really like unheard of and people are, don't understand, you know, like it's not, it doesn't exist quite yet. You know, it's like people are like, right. wait, like, why would I see authenticity when Aladdin is going on at this other school? But I, I don't know. I believe like parents and adults, like they show up for their kids. Yeah. And I, and I think they'd much rather see them going through things that exist. Any, you know, like what show, what Disney show is about like social media or. Right. You know, you know, like like things that actually people kids want to talk about different things than what's, you know, like in those all these existing shows. But it's so hard because schools don't aren't really open to doing stuff like that. Or I've been talking to the wrong people or, you know, like it's it's you think it would be easy to just get a show in and put it in. Um, 
but like it's like every school its own like i might as well talk to five or ten people before i get to the right person or somebody that's comfortable entertaining the idea i guess it's like a risky thing on their end so it's been it's almost like changing the mentality of the culture and like mm -hmm. trying to convince people that this new avenue does exist right. uh and we just yeah like i don't know I, I i'm just gonna be really annoyed if somebody like just beats me to it and starts putting like up a million shows in high schools right i mean when it comes to like academia anyway like mm -hmm. art always seems to be like a risk because it's not often something that schools True. Even put that much um backing or attention into mm -hmm. um so i guess in order to get people like excited about like oh doing theater or doing a show like oh yeah so we're gonna do newsies you know like something mm -hmm. like that but mm -hmm. um but you're you're right when you license something that way you can't change script it is stuck you have to hit but you know hit everything how they were mm -hmm. also be kind of like slapped with like a seizure desist um, mm -hmm. but in this situation I, I find this situation really cool because it is new and you're right parents are going to show up for the kids for like mm -hmm. if the show is on like the show is on at school or recitals in like a studio or something like that Mm -hmm. you're going to get butts and seats regardless you're going to get mom dad grandma grandpa little cousins uncle, like aunt uncles you know like some mm -hmm. of your friends are going to come like they're going to get that um and it would be cool to see something that you know maybe they aren't familiar with from you know a previous uh ip mm -hmm. um, you know and yeah you know, I, I i think it's a an awesome idea tell you the truth um and you. yeah because i mean people you know people package their shows mm -hmm. and their movies and normally they're gonna try to get it they're gonna get them try to get their movie to h24 or are they gonna try at least to do their show off broadway um to get it on the big stage that's the end goal right but this you know, yeah yeah you know trying to bring this into academia um could be really useful and i i didn't know that aspect of what you were doing so i was just learning this out so it was a really cool idea thank you yeah it's like it's hard because it's like there is like that idea of um <laughs> yeah like like it's it's like what's the end goal when you want to do a project it's like i want either to make money or i want people to see it mm -hmm. and it's just like i feel like the more you get into the nitty-gritty like i was like okay i want people to see it i want the like the more specific and goal oriented I became, I was like, no, like I want, if I could have anybody see my shows, it would be like teens. That's when I like struggled with like mental health or understanding myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if I could answer all the questions I had as a teen, put it in here, you know, like then suddenly it's like, why go to Broadway? You know, like why do this? Like these kids could be right here and need that, you know, and with content creation, things are everywhere. So it's like, you have to be, you know, you can't be broad about it. You can't be like, oh, I hope this goes up somewhere one day. It's like, no, I want it to be in front of this audience at this time. So true. And, you know, like, you know, the, the, like that puts, it's just a lot of accountability that I feel like is a lot of pressure um, that people don't really want to do that. Or it's like intense to be like, I want to make it for this one thing and that thing doesn't work out. Um, but that's why, like, I don't know, like I'm still like kind of committed to that. You know, like I definitely think, Broadway would almost isolate the people I want to reach. Like you don't see like 15, 16 year olds going, you know, they don't pay $150 to sit in that giant theater. They don't even like probably like, it probably won't touch like, like a Broadway show probably doesn't touch uh, somebody as much as it could in like, you know, your daily life. Like you don't have to get that kind of em empathetic experience by going and spending a lot of money you know like we we added so many luxuries to this experience that we forget at the bare bones of it it's just like connecting to people and if we want to connect to people we go right. to the people we don't expect them to come to us you know right yeah a lot of shows um like they'll come into prominence early to the broadway audi audience but then uh -huh. they won't like touch really the masses until years later mm -hmm. because there's such exclusivity in uh musicals in general you know mm -hmm. um 
they aren't super attainable. That's why we have like slime tutorials and stuff like that. And that's why we um, have a bunch of bootlegs mm -hmm. and like we're kind of clamoring for pro shots. Mm -hmm. um, and then it kind of like takes off in, in that sense. And a lot of times too, you know, a show to really be pushed that way mm -hmm. kind of has to start like winning stuff. Like, yeah. You know like, yeah. Um, you don't really hear about it. Like, you know, there's a, a musical um, came out recently called uh, Hell's Kitchen. It's like in a, you know. Oh, like, really? That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So it's like Alicia Keys musical. Um, and I remember being in uh, New York and like mm -hmm. hearing about it. And, and you know, the tickets were relatively cheap, um, but no one was really talking about it too much. Mm hmm. But now that like people who need to see it have seen it, now you know the mm -hmm. Tony Awards nomination came up and it's nominated for like everything, and I'm like, okay, it's not going to be cheap anymore. Yep. Um, but maybe now more people will want to see it. But like, what if those awards didn't come in? Would people have ever seen it? And what if it was like really important? Which I'm mm -hmm. hearing that it is. There's a lot of things that like touch those stages and leave. <laughs> A hundred, yeah. You have to see it. Um, so yeah, this yeah, this is a, a cool idea. So this is, is this mostly with authenticity, or this is something that you hope to do with all the productions that you do? Um, all the, I mean, in this sector of my life, because I'm still active in the, like the television community. I'm like a, I'm like a writer, and uh, more like a, you know, like like I'm big into kids television. Right. Um, but this is but this is definitely like my passion project. I would say like every time I'm not like working on pilots and stuff, I am I, on my day job. I'm a male nanny, but um, I will. But this is like the future for me. You know, it's like like I still work on making this like a nonprofit. So that way there are, new, you know, like finding new ways to do this. But I do see it as like do you, you familiar with like Star Kid? Yeah, absolutely. And all that. Yeah, like I, I think I could. I'm trying to work on a brand that is kind of like, cause I'm on my fourth musical right now. And the idea is that like, these all fall under the same umbrella of like, Oh, do you, if, if some kids are like, you know, you can find it on Spotify as its own album. You know, it's, it's like not, it's, it's, I'm trying to have it exist. Like even if nothing ends up happening, it's like, at least it's tangible in other places. I, you know, like there's some musicals that you're like, Oh, I've only heard this album, you know, like, mm -hmm. And and that's yeah. yeah like I want to be that guy like I want to be like oh like you could find his stuff anywhere online like just look up A B and C you'll find this musical and then maybe something will work out one you know like maybe the tenth musical will work out and then suddenly authenticity will be globally recognized you know it's right it's who knows but I mean the idea is that it's like passion it's it's um just like if I can get one school to put it up and like see the benefits of like doing something. Uh, like that, like even, oh, and like short form, like I try to keep my musicals like a lot shorter form because of the attention span. I think mm -hmm. kids are going and just with musicals in general, I feel like it turns people off. So I'm like, we could tailor this, you know, get a new generation of people to like musicals, but right. based on like, yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's a contemporary musical, uh, mm -hmm. which I mean, is needed. I mean, we have like our ingenue, we have our musicals which are mostly a bunch of period pieces mm -hmm. those are fun right period pieces are fun yes uh, period pieces are fun but you know not again super attainable and not super quick to be able to do yeah um, so uh authenticity is a feature film um right now as well as a yeah stage musical um and this is probably a question that you know, listeners might have, but mm -hmm. um, uh, are you able to watch Authenticity on your own? Is it festival circuit right now? Is it? Or no, is yeah, it we, 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 we did the festival circuit a while ago. It's actually, I just put it up on YouTube. So if you type it in on YouTube, it will come, the full feature is there. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So, right, y'all heard it here. Y'all heard it here. You can watch Authenticity on YouTube uh currently which is a is a good medium especially with someone as consistent as you with this mm -hmm. specific like specific title and also i i like what you're doing on social media too because it's still 
authenticity of the musical, but then like your other musicals mm-hmm. are being like promoted on that. Yeah. As well, so it's like authenticity is the catalyst to all this stuff that is coming out new that you are you're promoting. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's jump into that a little bit because you do have some stuff coming up. Yeah. And I want to talk a little bit more about that. Make sure people uh, go out to, to see those things. So um, we can kind of go into the middle, but let's talk about what's going up right now. So what are you currently working on? Yeah. So um, right now I'm I'm at the, we usually debut at like the Hollywood Fringe. That's kind of where I met Erica too. Um, but this is, this new one's called Heartbreak Hospital. And it's the same composer I did Authenticity with. And it's basically, I mean, it's like kind of like a fantasy where it's like when, uh, when, a, when, you know, you're at like a high school age and your heart gets broken, you have to go to this uh, medical facility that like works on tuning heartstrings. And basically like love is like music in this world. So it's like when your heartstrings are tuned, that's when you're considered like healthy. So like, so like the biggest worry that all the kids are dealing with is like, oh, I don't want to be toxic. I don't want to love toxically. So it's all about kids attending the hospital to try to figure out how to make that work. Um, but really, you know, like it's at the heart of it's, it's very comedic. It's, it's very like, uh, you know, the music is, is grounded, but the, the story is like very wacky. Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah, that's currently going. And then we're going to have a cast album for that release in about two months from now. So that'll be awesome. Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, so that's really exciting. That's really exciting. I've been seeing that up, and I'm just like, wow, like this is another project going. While yeah, I'm, like, the authenticity is um, kind of living on in that mm-hmm. um, as well. So after authenticity, after you did that, what was your next venture? After authenticity, I went to a show called Victoria Gray. I did like a little. I did like a little experiment where I like wrote a full book and I made a musical adaption of the book at the same time. Mm-hmm. So I I did that for about like probably a year and a half. Like I would I would uh I like finished the book and then I wrote the musical and then I rewrote the book because of the musical and then I rewrote the musical because of the book. I would and then I put that up at the fringe and that was like another thing. Like they're all one hour musicals, you know. So like they're not super high maintenance, but it is like you know, testing the waters for like what could be in a musical, but that, so like it went from authenticity, then I did that. And then now heartbreak is kind of the current, you know, like, and then, and then there'll be probably something next year. You know, it's, it's all about like how much I can afford. Cause you know, this stuff is expensive and I, I just like, I'd rather be, I just rather like, I don't know, like the cheapest way possible is what I want to do, but but you know, like also it's like you want you want that recognition. You want people to take what you do seriously. Mm-hmm. So like it is worth it to put all your resources into every project you do. And I try to do that anyway. Right. You know? Yeah. yeah. Your process is interesting because your process is something that is com like it's mm-hmm. it's common but still unheard of in the same way. Like yeah. you know, your you know, you're creating a film mm-hmm. simultaneously making it a stage musical, simultaneously making a film. And then right now you're just like, okay, yeah, I wrote a book, but then like, you know, I'm adapting that to a musical at the same time. And mm-hmm. like, that is something that people don't really know about. Um, Heather's The Musical was made specifically mm. with the idea to adapt it into a film. It did not happen. Oh, I didn't know that. That's really interesting. That was something that just recently kind of came out. Um, in an original performer said, yeah, the idea of doing this for stage was so it could be adapted into a film. Mm. Obviously, you know, it didn't happen. We have not seen that, but it's something that is kind of thought of, like the the lineage of a, a project when it's first being done. So mm-hmm. it, it's cool. So you, you stay busy with it. And yeah, it is expensive. Making, mm-hmm. making a short film is expensive, let alone making a feature film. Yeah. Um, and it's expensive too if you want like people to to see it the the festival circuit for people who don't know oftentimes you are submitting to festivals there are submission fees for these festivals. yes yeah just again because, that's just because you have submitted to it doesn't particularly mean that you're going to get in so you've paid your yeah or by 50 60 or something like that to get it into the festival 
you may not get selected. So it's yeah. kind of like a, a a gamble on that, but it's something that is necessary for the you know, yeah the community. You know, and you know, I would I mean I I would argue it's not always necessary. It's like because with authenticity we did that, and then we did get a decent amount of awards, but then like. I don't know. It's like kind of like a it's a like a gateway drug to like oh like I wanted this to win awards, but then at the end of the day, you're like wow, but I actually really like this as an existing piece at all, you know? Like and then because like the fact you make it when you make it, it's just it exists, you know? It's not gonna like like I feel like people fear that like things are gonna get like lost forever, but like right now, like we're discovering things from thirty years ago. Like I think twenty years from now, people are going to scrounge through everything and they're gonna find all this stuff you know like like nothing is ever gonna be gone forever right right yeah and once you once it's up it's up (laughs) like Mm -hmm. you can take it down but it still is up in some form that's just the way that you know internet works and you know the way that technology works for us now Mm -hmm. um so that you know that is a great point and again like it's it's up on youtube now and Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the the festival circuit has seen it, but now it's open to the public, mm-hmm. and more eyes will see it. And you, you know, you've got your awards; you can take no one can take that away from you. But um, the eyes that are on it now are probably the eyes that you wanted to see it in the mm-hmm. first place. Because exactly, yeah. yeah and when you're working on a kids, yeah, yeah, like when you're working on a budget, you can't afford to reach everybody. You know. Mm-hmm. Right, right, because then there's also just promotion in general, too, because uh, there's a few uh, sites, streaming sites, and I'll, I will put air quotes in streaming, you know, kind of mm-hmm. like Amazon, how you're able to kind of like put something up on your own. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a, it's, a, it's a process to do that, but you're able to do it on your own. People use that avenue as well. But then, yeah, again, that's not always super accessible either because they still have to essentially pay to see it (laughs) yes yeah yeah Yeah. so it's like in order to get people to even want to do that now you got to get into the promotion aspect which is expensive it's a it's a lot to i know market well like that's the thing and like they don't tell you that like i mean i wanted it to be seen by everybody so then i was so they're like okay well you know do it get it for festivals then you get it for festivals then they're like, well, if you have it as like a feature film that you could just send to people, that'll be easier, you know. And then I did it, and I got that feature film made. And then they're like, okay, well now, like, if you do that, like, there's, like, there's endless, like, this is how you do it. And like, I swear, feel like I've tried everything, and it's more just like, you know, like you could, you like, you can't, you can't chase, uh, you know, like you gotta be careful what you're chasing because it's like if you're chasing attention. Mm-hmm um you're gonna spend so much money on promotion right. um and then if you're chasing like you know like people to see the story and you make a movie like it's just hard there's no like formula to this is how people will see it you know like especially with like now that tiktok's here like for all i know it could have been if i waited two years put it up in 10 second increments i'm sure i could have got an audience quicker or faster but like i chose to make a movie because i was like you know what at least at the end of the day if it doesn't actually work out I'm just happy I made a movie. Not that like it's that's the only goal is to get people to see it, you know. Right. Yeah. You've you've made you've made something. You've made something in anytime mm-hmm. you make art, it lives on. Reg- like regardless of what like you the like the outcome is, you mm-hmm. make art and it's stuck there. You paint a like you paint a portrait. You've painted that portrait. Like it, it's going to live on. You know, it's a tangible piece of now some form of your legacy but also you know human history and that's the beautiful thing about it and Mm -hmm. after you make it and you know you care for it then you know eventually something's going to come from it and you're making other projects you know from you know the uh the bones of what you started out with you know yeah Um, which is you know which is cool so you can keep doing that you know start building those eyes and then you're going to get where you need to go it's gonna it's gonna come but you know not so much if you're chasing um, yeah yeah exactly you know and, yeah no and, and also you know nothing against you know folks who were like got that goal and they're chasing because you know it's still like nice to have a, a goal and stuff like that but mm-hmm. 
I guess there's like a a desperation sometimes, you know, like mm-hmm. a clamoring for um you know, that sort of recognition that, you know, those eyes, those likes, those shows, yeah, those comments and stuff like that. And sometimes, you know, you, you post something you're super happy about and then like you look and maybe an hour goes by and no one's really seen it or I know with it. And then you just kind of go into like your slump, like, Oh, you know, yeah, it's not super healthy. <laughs> it's really, yeah, that's like, that's like the really drab reality. I feel that's also why things aren't getting done anymore because it's like, you know, like maybe in, in a world you'd, you'd have just jumped up and made it, but then you put a feeler out for it. saw that five people liked it and decided that that made it irrelevant. You know, like people, are really I feel like people are unintentionally and unconsciously um blocking themselves from creativity at, in this like in this era we're at mm-hmm. and like in a weird way it's like kids or like content creators like it's almost like the new thing to do is be more commercial you know like like everybody wants to be a mainstream you know like like if you're on TikTok you're like trying to make things that appeal to everyone it's like you're not even doing your own voice any you know like Mm-hmm. like people are like oh it's cool to make things that are universally appealing but that's like very that could be very um you know you, like not everybody should learn how to make their personality work for everybody in the world you know that's it's like a very like demeaning thing that people don't realize is 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 demeaning you know like it's like mm-hmm. you don't have the drive to do to go up and make a musical if uh you feel like nobody's listening to you and social media gives you that impression it like it's just such a roadblock i wish i wish social media was like something i don't even know what the the solution is it's just social media is social media you know it is it's growing and you know it is it is very trend based it's algorithm based um and you know algorithm does what it wants mm-hmm. you know it feels um, your personal page with whatever it believes you'll like the most. Um, yeah. And, you know, it, you know, so there, you're right. There is a, a roadblock for creativity, you know, to do something like new when like something went viral on accident and now like 35 people have taken that thing and put their own spin on that thing. Yeah. Like 35 more people have taken that thing and they've remixed it and kind of like bounced it back and forth. Yep. Uh, people do the same video, the same trend multiple times on their own page because they know it's going to like do well. Maybe they'll do it in yeah. the location. Um, so like building something from scratch, I don't know. It's something that isn't uh, talked about as often unless it like blows up and then that becomes kind of tricky. Yeah. And like it used to be like with old YouTube, it used to be, can you make something really good? that will go viral and now it's like no i don't want to make something really good i want to make something that's seen by everybody because you can't make something that's really good and seen by everybody like that's just mm-hmm. like it could coincidentally happen but like you know it i i feel like the new goal is i want to make something that's seen by everybody you know like you'll quickly and i don't see anybody that's like oh i want to make i'm gonna like put all my time and effort into this and i don't care if anybody sees like like as long as it's good like that's a little less of a thing now you know like it's just there's such a business to creativity that's like oh creativity could be a means of survival it could be a means of getting money and that like kind of that kind of makes art a little bit harder nowadays you know it it does yeah and it's like a double-edged sword at the same time because um the type of art like we make as far as like new media Mm -hmm. and it it costs money like it costs money to make like yeah you know i'm looking over here like you know it's like i got this you know i have this mic i've got a bunch of lights i got my camera and stuff like that all of which Mm -hmm. cost money to make and the funny thing is like i'll make a project and even what i have even though it's a lot of stuff to make a project may not be enough to make it i may need to go outsource Mm, yeah money to make this particular project work um and Sometimes, you know, and I've I've definitely found other like creative angels out there who are willing mm-hmm. to kind of like help and donate and amazing um, donate a space or donate a location or maybe I'll like 
maybe we can make a trade on you know or something like that who are kind of down for that cause you know to make something happen mm-hmm. um, which is super fortunate if you you know if you uh they're out there if you you know if, if you do look a little bit yeah yeah you know um let's uh, let's jump into the music aspect of authenticity let's sure talk about that a little bit um uh so we are talking about a musical yeah and so the the structure you, you said that you know you work with a composer for mm-hmm. uh, the musicals you have um do you are you writing lyrics or how are you um collaborating with this composer yeah i usually i usually i usually do lyrics and melody um like i knew this guy since like college we did like a lot of um he like he would usually because I did t I did more TV related projects so he would like make the theme songs for all my shows and like right. every now and then help me out but when I did a musical um, he kind of like walked me through the music end of it um, but I I mainly do lyrics and I like mainly lyrics and I'll get some help with melodies but for the most part I have like my melodic ideas and like it's usually like a back and forth with um my composer. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also like, you know, like I, I usually work with different composers. Like the, it's not like I'll, I'll have like a different composer for each musical. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. That's interesting because it's like it's like, you know, like it's your project. But then when it gets to music, it's like you kind of have to bring that other person's identity into that. You know, like you almost got to like, you know, like because like it's like very clear, like, oh, I'm putting too much of myself in this song. It sounds like it's this person writing the song for me. I need to like. Mm-hmm. kind of get them to put more of their opinions into this so that way it becomes right. a joint thing you know like those mm-hmm. um yeah sorry i forget the original question it was just what do i do yeah like it's just, i just write the lyrics and the melodies <laughs> i know um you still yeah you, you still answered it and you brought up a good point too where it's like um the because the music itself for obvious reasons, like makes the production, makes the show, makes the mm-hmm. movie. If it is a musical, that kind of like reverberates. Um, yeah. Even if someone maybe hasn't seen um, a film that much, but if it's a musical, maybe they listen to the soundtrack on repeat. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and it, you know, it's also the type of thing where it's like you know, for for shows, for for plays, for musicals um you'll know who directed it you'll know who write it wrote it and stuff like that but you will know specifically who made the music yeah yeah you know um you'll know that who made the music who made the music they're kind of like the stars of a show in Mm -hmm. a sense you know because you know if you look and you you see like music and lyrics by Mm -hmm. that's to the forefront even more directed by yeah yeah you know 100 percent. yeah so and it's kind of going back to that a little bit more in movies now with lin-manuel when he puts music in him like you know because normally whoever did the the music even though we we know like our island makings and stuff like that Mm -hmm. we do but it wasn't often promoted that much um, mm-hmm. the way yeah. it would be like on a show like obviously like you know we know alan making the music for newsies so it's like okay that's to the forefront now like you get a movie like Encanto, and it's mm-hmm. like they'll make sure to blast that lin-manuel did this music yeah yeah to blast it and he comes out and he speaks about it more often like they did a show at the hollywood bowl he came out and talked about it um you know but he did the music, but his music kind of shaped what the the film would be. Um, yeah, super you know, important, and it's also cool. Like you know, you're put you're like putting these shows together. You're putting these stories together. You're also doing lyrics, and someone is composing. Like, um, let's uh, let's for for people who like don't know, let's let's shout out who the the composer is for authenticity. Yeah, its name is Michael Van Bodegum Smith. Mm-hmm. 
He did, yeah, and then he also did the new musical. He's definitely like, you know, like he's my long term collaborator for sure. Right, right. Um, yeah, maybe at the you know at some point I can get you both in and kind of like talk about like a little bit more about um, Heartbreak Hospital, you know, just to get that out there too. So Heartbreak Hospital uh, is on its way. You're promoting that. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be at the Fringe as well? Yeah, yeah, that's at the Fringe. Actually, it's going on right now. So it's going to be now until uh, the end of June. The end of June. That's uh, that's how long the run is. What's the official last day? Do you know? Uh, the twenty? No, the nineteenth. Actually, so maybe not the whole month, but uh, the next, the next three or four will be in the next week. You're welcome to come if you're in LA. Oh yeah, oh. yeah. I'm definitely in LA, and I should be in LA during that time too. So I'll definitely check that out. Um, at the Fringe. Um, so just for a little inside scoop. Mm -hmm. A little inside scoop because you know, you're a creative and creative always has something. Is there anything in the pike up here that you like that you have like going on or you be thinking about like without giving too much away about it? Mm -hmm. You know, like is there anything that like you're excited about? Even if you don't want to actually say what it is, but is there anything up there that you think might be coming down the pike after Harper Hospital? Oh yeah. Um yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm more, I like the styles of doing things more than I like mm -hmm. the concepts of that. You know, like I like, oh, next time I want to make a musical that like, I'm like, I want to work with somebody completely different, or I want to make a book from this. I want to make this interactive. I want to, like, it usually stems from that. And then, and then, and like, I already kind of, I mean, not already, but like, it's more like I have a million ideas and I'm like, which is the perfect idea for right here, right now resources I have available um, and also like inspire me. And I think I picked it out and I think I'm going to, I'm going to try to, you know, like I'm going to try to focus on my goals and then, I mean, either way, if the goals come through or not, like it's still going to be a music, you know, I mean, there's probably going to be another musical in the next year or something. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so where can we listen to authenticity? Yeah. Authenticity is available on Apple music, Spotify, pretty much anywhere you can get your music, I think. Um, or you can watch the entire feature film and listen to the music through that on YouTube. That'll get more plays, I guess. Um, and then <laughs> what else is it? I mean, yeah, that's, that's kind of, that's where it exists. It exists on uh, any uh, music streaming platform. I definitely think that's the best medium to check it out. Okay, cool. And if somebody wanted to become a fan of authenticity, like where could they find you where can they find your social media mm. follow yeah yeah you can find follow authentic musicals on instagram we we do a lot of our stuff through um and like updates like kind of what we do uh we're we're big on instagram but you can find us on like facebook or youtube mm -hmm. um but yeah authentic stories is the name of our company in general that's amazing that's amazing it ties right back into authenticity mm -hmm. um, yeah so this is great. I wish you best of luck of getting this out into schools. Um, Thank you, Darius. I appreciate you like meeting with me and making treating me like a professional because it feels <laughs> <laughs> it feels good. It feels good. Yeah, honestly, this is this is what this this show is about. It's going to mm -hmm. light on uh, performers and and artists and who mm -hmm. I think you know are the like, rising stars in that you're creating, which is how you in my opinion, how you, the best way to move forward is just to keep creating, keep coming up with ideas with your team. Mm -hmm. And that's how you'll move forward uh, in the long run. So 100%. Yeah. So this was, yeah, this was, this was awesome. I'd, uh, I'd hope to get you back on this, you know, soon, you know, maybe. We'll yeah, talk definitely. About, um, we'll talk about uh, Harper Hospital and anything else you have coming up the pike, if there's anything else. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and I'll give you uh, Michael's info because he's he's a really interesting person in his own world too. Like he's he's his own, uh, you know, like he has his own brand and everything outside of me completely. So that he's a fun person to talk to. Yeah, absolutely. So and I'm about to go check out Authenticity the Musical on YouTube, and uh, yeah, then I guess we'll see everyone soon. This has been Performers Wanted, and we are out.